Hey, welcome to the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute with your host, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest, Alan Bishop. Hey, this channel is all about home distilling and legal distilling. If you've got questions, reach out to us in the comments below, social media, or via bishopshomegrown at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out thealchemistcabinet.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Back with another Talking Head video. Uh, we'll see how many questions we can get through on this one. And uh, I do apologize for... The lack of new videos lately um it's just a busy time of the year right so and you guys know that you know the holidays and all that stuff plus trying to keep up with work commitments new projects that i'm also working on the book um and the various podcasts it's just it's been difficult to be able to do as many videos as i'd like to do um and also please keep questions coming to me because i have noticed that the questions have tailored off or not tailored off but have petered out just a little bit and i think it's because we've answered so many of them that people are sort of you know they're running out of questions but anytime you guys have questions reach out to me bishops homegrown at gmail.com of course the alchemistcabinet.com or the youtube comments below and I'll be glad to answer them to the best of my ability. I do love doing this. Uh, I don't think it's bad to, you know, have a little lull and not having two or three videos a week. I think it's okay to have a video a week sometimes. Uh, it certainly makes my life easier whenever I'm trying to uh, to work on other things. And sometimes things do get crowded. Things do get difficult. So um, let's get into our first question here. So uh, kudos, love your videos. I find them inspiring, educational, and entertaining. Super keen to buy a still to start my journey into the craft. I'm constant. I'm considering a bubble plated still because of the modularity, but I have a question. I'd like the flexibility of making various spirits from whiskey, brandy to vodka. I understand the size of the column makes a difference to the speed of distillation, but does it make a difference to the quality of the distillate? Let's say four inch versus two inch. I'm currently learning, currently leaning to a 501 setup with four inch glass plate, call plate column, but any advice is very much appreciated. Regards, Lewis. Great questions, Lewis. Um, you know, modular stuff is awesome. That's the, that's what I love. I love modular stuff. Uh, you know, I love the flexibility of having modular stuff. I've often joked that it's, you know, it's kind of like a, an erector set for adults. You know, you can switch things in and out as you want to and as you need to. Uh, and that's very worthwhile. It's, it's nice to be able to have a pot still mode or a column still mode. Now, as far as the size of your column, yes, I do very much firmly believe that there is a qualitative difference between two inch and four inch. And I think that most home distillers would tell you this. The big problem with bubble plates at home is that most columns designed for hybrid distillation, so a pot still with a column on top of it. Uh, although they have down comers in them, typically, at least the four inch ones do, three and four inch often do, two inch often does not. Uh, they don't have an ability to actually control how much uh, gets returned down that down comer via valve on the outside. That's the biggest problem that I ever really see um, with those sorts of setups. But I can tell you that I've had great luck with four inch plates quite often. I use them quite a bit. They're very controllable. Yes, sometimes you do get some flooding on some plates. And it's really, it's really a matter of fighting the speed of distillation or the amount of heat you have going in versus the amount of reflux that you have to get those to balance out in the right way. It's even harder with two inch plates. I've got some two inch plates. I very rarely run them. If I do run them, I'm only running one, maybe two at a time usually, uh, because they don't drain right quite often. They're not big enough. And also the surface area, in my opinion, it makes for basically like crowding the vapor and crowding the distillate. Uh, it's harder to get a good quality cut of alcohol and maintain the proof that you want to maintain on those two inch plates. Now there's nothing wrong with them and you can run them, if, especially if you really are paying attention to what you're doing and you have surgical precision with your heat as well as your reflux. But wherever you can, I would go three or four inch. And honestly, I think four inch does the best. I even run four inch plates oftentimes on very small stills. Uh, you know, I've got a little three gallon that I use for a lot of stuff when I'm finishing things out and I'll even run four inch plates on that. I don't have any issue with that whatsoever. Um, obviously you don't get much liquid off of that. So you gotta really be paying attention, but I would always rather have that largest, sur larger surface area with a down comer on it, as opposed to the way those two inch bubble caps are made. So that way everything has a chance to come to equilibrium. I can control things a little bit more because it takes more vapor to actually fill everything up and then reflux and then actually get a, a liquid layer layer on top of your bubble caps. So if I were you, I would lean harder into that four inch size than the two inch size, right? The two inch size is fine, but I think for controllability, you're going to want the four. And I think you'd be a lot happier with the four inch overall. So, um, no, that was kind of a really roundabout way of explaining that not overly scientific, but I think you understand what I'm, what I'm driving at there. So, uh, let's move on to the second question here. So this one is from, uh, Cy. So, Hey Alan, 
<coughs> looking into fermenting out bread to make bourbon to, or add to a fruit brandy. Haven't found a great deal of information except for kvass. Is this a waste of time or should I go down the grain side? I have three batches going in an experiment with different breads made by my brother-in-law's artisan bakery with a sugar shine style. Uh, 15 liters water, one kilogram bread toasted, 2.5 kilogram sugar, baker's yeast. Any advice would be appreciated uh, from Australia. Very cool. So, um, I don't know. I, I think that it's worthwhile. I think it's fun to play with. I would. <clears throat> I don't know if I would specifically try to use bread that was made specifically to use for fermentation, right? To me, it would make more sense to approach that from the, let me get the same grains, the same ingredients that would go into that bread ordinarily uh, in order to make a whiskey from. But certainly if you have access to bread that's going to go bad or otherwise spoil, it makes a lot of sense. The same thing as when we did the apple fritter liquor here on the channel, you know, the idea was that donut shops probably have a waste stream of things that they can't get rid of. Let's see what we can do with them fermentation wise. So I think specifically if you can get a hold of bread that's not going to be consumed otherwise, I think it's very, very worthwhile. Um, it may even be worthwhile sometimes for breads that are made you know, not necessarily specific for distillation, but that, you know, you're doing this as a one-off, as a gift to somebody or something special, something cool. I think that's worthwhile. And I certainly think that you could use those breads in combination with brandy. Uh, I think you could get some really cool split brandy sort of flavors out of them. That's sort of the idea with the apple fritter, right? You're really looking at sort of the wheat component plus the apples, plus the sugar for the icing and how those things distill together, how they come across. Could I imitate that flavor? Not using an apple fritter, I absolutely could. But if there are apple fritters that are in a waste stream that I can make use of, then that makes a whole lot of sense. If they're going to go to waste or ruin one way, shape, form, or the other, you might as well grab hold of those and do something with them. So I'm interested to know what you are doing and what you are coming up with and how they do turn out. It's interesting. Um, you had mentioned here as well. Uh, so where was it at? Uh, anyway, so you had three different ones going. Uh, by your brother-in-law's artisan bakery with a sugar shine style. So you already have access to artisan bakery. So there's probably going to be a waste stream there to some degree, right? Uh, and I think you mentioned maybe even toast and yeah, uh, bread, toasted bread. So even if you were using the grains separate from the bread, you could always toast those grains as well and get some of that similar flavor profile to come across. But again, if it's a waste stream, why not make use of it? I think that makes complete sense for what we do as home distillers or towards the history of distillation in general, where so often it's an agrarian uh, enterprise to make use of any extra stuff that you have before it does get spoiled. You know, I think that's uh, that's very, very worthwhile. You know, we might be able to get three questions in this one. I don't know. So let's see here. We got from Whiskey Shaman. <clears throat> All right, I got a question. Let's say you have a spirit that is clear and you want to proof it down before barreling. Do you do a long proof down or short? I have heard that clear spirits don't matter as much for saponification. Also, where would I find a good brandy yeast? I've been using whiskey yeast and I want to see the difference in the flavor. All right, so typically if I am going to go into a barrel, so all of our whiskeys at Spirits of French Lick actually go into the barrel, most of them, not all of them. The bourbons all do, the ryes all do. I actually go into the barrel at 105 proof. They come off the still at 135 plus or minus a little bit. And we do proof them down without any real uh, thoughts about saponification before they hit the barrel. Because what's really happening with that saponification is over time it sort of everything esterifies, right? These are those long chain fatty acids. They need time to, to change over, etc. So I don't put that much thought into it whenever I proof down to go into a barrel. If I'm coming out of a barrel to go into a bottle, I certainly proof down very, very slowly. If I'm making a white spirit, I definitely proof down very, very, very slowly. Uh, but as far as taking saponification into uh, account prior to going into the barrel, I haven't noticed qualitatively an issue but again, bear in mind, I'm using full size 53 gallon barrels that are setting for at least four years. So the chemical reactions that are happening, you know, the liquid that goes into that barrel is not chemically the same as the liquid that comes back out of that barrel in four, five, six, seven years, etc. So as far as brandy yeast, so a lot of people actually have access to brandy yeast and they don't realize that they do. So EC1118 is that also known as Pradal de Mousse. It is the most extensively used brandy yeast in the entire world. If you've had a commercial brandy from a big producer, likely it was made with EC1118. So you do have access to brandy yeast uh, pretty steadily and pretty commonly within the industry. Um, short of that, most of the other brandy yeast are going to be things that you're going to need an account for uh, with somewhere like White Labs or potentially with, uh, you know, Scott Labs. Scott carries lots and lots of brandy yeast. Um, you know, OK Yeast and Vin 13, those are two that I constantly recommend. 
if you can get them and they are harder to get, they are very worthwhile. They are like EC1118, uh, but with a much lower um, factor for creating acetylaldehyde and ethyl acetate. So you get smaller heads cuts off of those, uh, but you get otherwise all of the positive attributes of what you would get from EC1118. So I hope that answers your quest question, Whiskey Shaman. I hope you're doing well, brother. So um, I think that wraps up the questions I've got today, and I hope I answered them all favorably or in a way that helps you guys i do have some process stuff coming up i've got a little bitty uh two ounce mini still that wayne herbert from ozark still sent over to me that we're going to play around with just for fun for a short video and then you guys remember those old-fashioned hard christmas candies well christmas is coming up right i'm thinking that i'm going to take some of those i don't know a pound or so melt them in a gallon of liquor and redistill it because i got thinking those old-fashioned hard christmas candies have so many fruit or botanical flavors that I would normally use in a botanical distillation in the first place. It might be kind of cool to distill a gallon of that and break it up and give it to people for Christmas. I don't know. We'll see if we have time to do that. I'm planning on doing it. I'm planning on filming it. Won't be a long video, uh, but we'll distill that off and then we'll do a little analyzation and see what it tastes like. Uh, the Sunday fun day stuff is coming back up. We will be doing some more of those tastings in the near future as well. And I hope you guys are all just doing well for the holidays. So I know that I was sick for a long time with COVID and then sinus stuff on top of it and chest congestion and all that stuff. I think I'm finally starting to get over that. And uh, I hope you guys have a great holiday season. I love y'all. I'll catch you later.